This is the third video in the React video series. In the first two videos, we have set up a development environment for React. We have written a simple hello world code in React. And then we've also seen how JSX helps us write React code in a more productive manner. Starting from this video, we're going to explore some key concepts of React and also use these concepts to build a simple web application. The concepts we'll explore in this video are React element, React component, and props. And in the next video, we're going to see state and events. This is the web application that we're going to build. So we have an image section, which is displaying an image. And then we have four buttons here, corresponding to four different cities. On clicking one of these buttons, the image section displays the image of the corresponding city. And we'll start off with some starter code which you can find at this shortened link. This link points to a GitHub repository called City App Starter Code. So make sure you clone or download this repository before continuing further. Now we have a local copy of the starter code. This code is similar to the code at the end of video one, except for two changes. Now within the static folder, we have a folder called images. And within this, we have four JPEGs corresponding to the images for each of the cities. And then within the SRC folder, we have a new file called data.js. Data.js exports some data that we'll be using in our web application. Specifically, it contains a variable called data, which is an array of four objects. Each object corresponds to a city and has two properties one corresponding to the title of the city and the other corresponding to the URL of the image relevant to the city. So for Delhi, we have the URL slash images slash Delhi dot JPEG, which refers to the file here. So now let's do an NPM install and then come back to this video. Let's talk about React elements now. React elements are the fundamental building blocks of a React application. In React, we break a web application into React elements. Each of these elements corresponds to some UI element in the web application. For example, in this web application, we have a UI element called image section. So for this, we'll have one React element. Let's call it image box. And then for each of these buttons, we'll have one React element. Let's label the corresponding React elements as button one to button four. And then typically we have a React element called app, which corresponds to the entire web application. So in this web application, we have six React elements. We have app and then app contains the React element image box. And it also contains four React elements corresponding to the four buttons. Next, we talk about React components. React components describe the UI with independent reusable pieces. So if React elements are like objects, then React components are like classes for these objects. For this application, we have three React components. We have app, we have image box, and we have button. And the React elements above are instances of these React components respectively. Let's go back to the code we wrote in app.jsx in video one. Here we define one React component called hello world. Every React component has to extend the react.component class. Additionally, it also has to implement a method called render, which has to return a React element. In line 15, we have created a React element. We have done this by instantiating the React component we described above. Again, React components are like classes and React elements are instances of those classes. And just like we can have multiple objects from the same class, we can have multiple React elements instantiated from the same React component. Let's build our web application now. First of all, let's set Webpack in watch mode. Currently, every time we make a change in the SRC folder, we have to run Webpack again to build bundle.js. But if we run Webpack in watch mode, 
it will automatically do this for us. So now every time you make a change in the source code here and save, Webpack will automatically re regenerate bundle.js. Let's invoke another terminal and run our node server in that terminal. So now we have a node server running and Webpack running in watch mode. So let's continue building our web application. Let's write code to create the React components. We have three React components. It's a good idea to put all your components in a folder called components. And my components will go here. So a good rule of thumb is one component per file. So we'll have one file for the image box component and then we'll have one file for the button component. The app component, which is the root component, typically goes in the app.jsx file. We have now defined a React component for app. Let's instantiate this component to create a React element. Now let's write code for the other two React components, starting with ImageBox. Render. Finally, we export the ImageBox React component so it can be imported into other files like app.jsx. Now let's define the button react component by reusing some of this code. Let's copy paste this code into button.jsx and then make the necessary changes. Also export this button react component so it can be imported into app.jsx. Now in app.jsx, we are going to redefine the react element returned by the app class such that it contains the five other react elements and we have button there's something missing in this code we haven't imported the react components we are instantiating in this code let's fix that so let's import image box And also let's import button. With this done, our code should now work. Let's run it in the browser. So we currently have placeholder text for all the six React elements. And if you look at the DOM tree, we'll see all the code that React has generated for us. So you have code for app, image box and the four buttons. Now let's replace the placeholder text with something more meaningful. Let's start with image box. We'll make image box render an image tag with the source URL as the URL for the Delhi image and the alt text as Delhi. Now let's reload the web page in the browser. And we see an appropriate image box being rendered. Now let's talk about the third concept on our list and it's called props. Let's draw some analogy from classes and objects. When you instantiate a class, you can provide parameters to the class and then you get an object with those particular parameters. Similarly, when you instantiate a React component, you can provide it parameters called props and you'll get a React element with those particular parameters or those particular props. How do you pass props? When you instantiate a React component, you can use JSX style attributes to set parameters. And how do you use a prop in a React component definition? All props 
are available in the this.props property. For example, let's use props to create image box. While instantiating image box, let's pass it some parameters. Let's import the data.js file which contains data for the different cities. And let's pass the first object parameters to image box. We pass parameters as JSX attributes. So the first parameter is URL and the value of it is derived from the data 0.url. The second parameter is title whose value is derived from data 0.title. Now let's use these props in the image box component definition. So this class will get parameters URL and title and it should expect them at this.props.url and this.props.title respectively. Let's use these in the definition below. Now image box is not static, it derives its parameters from the props passed to it during instantiation. Let's check this out in the browser. Let's change these parameters to something else and reload the page. Okay, so now we have a different image box. Cool, now that we have a hang of props, let's also define the button component to something appropriate. For the button, we'll use a span instead of a div because we want all of these buttons to line up in the same horizontal line. And then we'll use the button tag and the inner text for this tag will derive from a props called this.props.title. We'll pass on two props to this React component, title and URL. We'll see how this will be useful in the next video. Now let's re-instantiate these buttons with appropriate props. So we'll cycle through the objects in the data array. Now let's reload our app. And everything seems to work just fine. Let's refactor this code a bit. Whenever you have to iterate through an array to instantiate React elements, there's a better way to do it. You can use the array.map method. We'll invoke array.map on our data array. Array.map will return us the four objects in the data array one by one. Let's tag that object by the variable name city. For each such object, we'll return a button react element. So array.map will return us an array of react elements. Finally, all of this code is JavaScript written within JSX, so it should be enclosed in curly braces. Let's save this and reload our app in the browser. And everything works fine as before. But if you go to the console, we'll see a warning. So every time you create React elements by an iterator, make sure that each React element has a uniquely defined key. This is something to do with how React works under the hood. So let's attach a unique key property to each of our button instantiations. We know the city name is unique and won't be repeated across these button elements. So we can use that as the key. Now let's reload our page. And everything works and we also have no warning. In this video, we have constructed the layout of our web app. We created three React components and six React elements from these components. We have also explored props and how to pass properties via props. However, our app is still not feature complete. We'll take care of it in the next video.